there'll be more pendings that happen this winter than any winter in the history of residential real estate. This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 150 of The Real Word. Word is up. There you go. I we should have my feeling. Like, 150 episodes later. <laughs> I, like I know you, it was a big moment for you. It was you. a big moment, but here we are. Here we are. Just in our room like normal. We're going to talk about some predictions for 21. Maybe Sam has a, like a secret up his sleeve or something. If you're doing some hiring, you got a really good marketeer. <laughs> Sam maybe has a secret. Maybe he's going to put some confetti here for you or whatever. Oh, that'll be nice of him. Um, before we get into that, I want to yes. remind you guys because... In 2021, if you are watching this on YouTube on Winning Companies YouTube channel, you won't be able to do that in 21 anymore. Go over to the Real Word new YouTube channel where we've uploaded all 150 episodes. It's going to be the only place you're going to be able to find the Real Word. So make sure you go to the Real Word YouTube channel, subscribe, hit the little subscribe button, hit the little like button on this video. Help out the algorithm for us. Hey, you know, technically, I think this is actually episode 151. Remember our very first one? Wow. Remember our very first one? We recorded it and then, but I don't think it actually got recorded. So we had to do a whole oh, yeah. nother take two. Beginner mistake. Press uh, record. Yes. On, on we video. had, we, we, it was just, we were in your parents' basement. Yeah. <laughs> if the walls could talk. The uh, house has been sold. Well, congratulations, though, on, on yeah. 150 episodes. Yeah, congrats, It's Nicole. been fun sitting here with you. Let's jump right into it. Let's do it. All right. I mean, that's old news. 150 is old news now. It is. Uh, so this is an Inman piece. This is from the Windermere chief economist, Matthew Gardner. Beyond the headlines, what's in store for 2021? These are predictions, prediction mode uh, from, from an economist who's been around quite a bit. I think that I have to say, though, that um, if you are listening to this, I do encourage you to actually like click the link and read it because oh, I yeah. do. I am. I guarantee you, if you have not been asked the question, you will be asked the question about 2021. I mean, in these topics in particular, he hits on all the big ones. We're going to go through them. Uh, and we've talked a lot about like what IV Zellman has said, what Keeping Current Matters is saying, uh, you know, a number, you know. Uh, Lawrence Young, you know, uh, from uh, NAR. We've, we've talked about all of these economists. We haven't talked about Matthew's insight. And uh, we're going to get into that right now. Yeah, I love it. And I think it's like it's it's chewable information. So yeah, hopefully in the editing, we're putting all of these graphs, graphs. up. Yep. I like it when we do that. So let's start with mortgages. The average 30 year mortgage rate history and forecast. This particular chart is going back to 2016, where we're at 3.65, 2017 was four, 2018 was four and a half. That was, 2018 was probably mm -hmm. the worst market we've seen mm -hmm. in, in residential real estate. Who would figure four and a half percent interest rates? Uh, 2019 came back down to about four, just under four. Quarter one of 2020, three and a half percent. Quarter two down to 3.23. Quarter three down to under 3%. And here in quarter four, this says 2.83 percent. I'm seeing 275 right now. Well, I think I think it really depends on obviously your credit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, we we mentioned this on a previous episode where Ivy Zellman said, "Listen, the rates are going to eventually go up." We talked about it with the vaccines. If the vaccines and, and there's more. Ooh, and normalcy. today was like the day one of UK. Really? Yeah, they the UK uh, patient what patient patient one or patient A. Okay. Ninety year old woman. That'll help our. Uh, U.S. market for sure, but no. Eventually, we're gonna have the vaccine. I'm just letting here. you know. It's like, no, no. I, I, I uh, big day. Appreciate that, big and day. we should be having our day one or patient one or whatever you want, patient zero, uh, very soon, soon. It sounds like so. So we're gonna get our vaccines, and as we get back to a place of normalcy at some point in 2021, as the economy starts to even recover more than it has, you should theoretically, to Ivy Zellman's point, and now. Uh, to Matthew's point, you should see these interest rates start to tick up. So uh, he's projecting quarter one to go up to 2.88%, not really far off of where we've seen here. Nope. Um, quarter two, two over 2.9%. 2 but in the second half of the year, he's projecting that we'll be at 3% in quarter three and, and about 3.08% in quarter four for the 30-year mortgage. Which is still which is still low. That's still... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those are still very low. Listen... Those are lower than quarter two 
of 2020. You bought this year. You maximized on that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I need to refinance. Yep. I, I thought that well, I was going to do it next year. We'll but. say it again. Refinance alert. Maybe we can get some flashing <laughs> sirens on the screen here. If you are over 4%, if you have clients over 4%, if you have friends and family over 4%, or really right now, because we're sitting at 2.7, really over 3.75, yeah. you should be refinancing your mortgage. Make sure you're educating your clients on that. Uh, that's probably we're gonna we've got a great marketeer coming up. If you're making a higher in 21, you want to stick around for that. Uh, but I think a, a marketing campaign that we could all be using right now is Tom Ferry said this actually uh, in a really nice way. He said, "You're not going to say it nicely." Uh, I don't think I'm going to say it as nicely as TF. Oh, okay, did. all right. Put out a piece that says, "Are you going to be bragging about your interest rate in 10, 15, 20 years?" Basically, right. meaning, are you going to buy here in 2020, right. 2021, and take advantage of these? historically low interest rates. Right. Will you be bragging in 10, 15 years to all your friends about your interest rate? Pretty good marketing campaign. You could play with the words there. Or you could listen to TF's uh, housing um, podcast from last Friday with, with Lisa Chinati. Lisa yeah, was I saw on. that. I saw that was, it was a, a, little, a, little, a little group sesh. They had a little group session in there. A little group sesh. All right. Uh, forecast for conventional 30-year fixed mortgage rates in 21. So this is, um, he's got his Windermere economics, but he's got everybody in there. Fannie Mae says 2.8. Wells Fargo says 2.9. Freddie Mac says 3. Uh, Fannie and Freddie, they just can't agree, huh? Clearly not, they're, but they're, they're always clumped together, off. you know? Windermere, uh, 3.06. NAR 3.1 and Mortgage Bankers Association is the highest at 3.3. That's an interesting um, number there. So you've got what, four out of six that are forecasting uh, the fixed mortgage rates in 21. The mm -hmm. average is going to be three or over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 10 year treasury. We talked about this with Ivy Zellman. Mm -hmm. uh, we're projecting here, uh, or he's projecting that the 10 year treasury maturity rate history and forecast is going to go up each quarter of 2021, which theoretically would drive up those 30-year right. fixed He's saying rates. that those maps sort of overlay properly. Yeah. yeah. All right, now let's go into category number two. So there's your mortgage mm -hmm. prediction from Windermere. Now we're into home sales. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody's saying what? What's this winner gonna be? No? What? Put you on the spot there. Yeah, you did. This, this winter oh in residential God. real estate is going <laughs> to be the best winter ever. Is that what you're hearing? That's what I'm hearing over mm. and over again. This is the winner. This is going to be the best winter ever for residential real estate. Uh, Keeping Current Matters is saying that. Hmm. Ivy Selman, Lawrence Young again. They're all saying this. That uh, like closings in, in or terms pendings. Of sales. So pendings, yeah. Pendings, yeah. Because pendings are different than closed. Yeah, pendings. Pendings, okay. Pendings happening. There'll be more pendings that happen this winter than any winter in the history of residential real estate. I guess it doesn't surprise me. I mean, no. everything's sort of been history of something this year. Um, but I, I mean, obviously, I'm still wildly confident for 2021. So taking a look at existing home sales, the for Matthews forecast for sales this year uh, was 3.9%. But sales in 2021 should be up by 6.9%. That's a level we haven't seen since 2006. Uh, so 2020 was actually higher. It was at 5.5. 2021, um, we'll see what happens there. But he's projecting 6.9%. They will be up. Sales prices. What's that going to do to sales prices? Okay. Um, this year has been very impressive. Mm -hmm. right? We would all agree here in Connecticut has been very impressive on, on how those sales prices have jumped. We finally came back to our 2007 numbers. Well, yeah, I guess. I do think that... Single family homes, yeah, not, I, not for condos. I do think though that um, appraisers were definitely keeping us in check. Yeah. I mean, that you know that was certainly interesting and some buyers having to come to the table with additional cash to like actually make it happen. But um, yeah, no, I think it's been... But, but our I, median price point here, at least anyways has come back to 2007 level which it took us 13 years well, that, so that so so th i think that's important though to, to preface because again i and again we're just talking really about connecticut because with the amount of On people right because with the amount of people that have been coming here you know they're obviously concerned about buying right now in this market because they're feeling like that we're in a bubble or that they're right. overpaying or but we've been like i'm gonna say it we've been wildly healthy like yeah 
you know, we've been looking at two, you know, 2% increases, 3% increases. So yeah, it's going to take us so much longer to sort of get there. So, and again, he gets into bubbles. So I don't want to ruin that. I don't want to ruin that, that part, but. Um, so the prices have been impressive. We should see sale prices in 2020 ending up 7.4% higher than we saw in 2019. Uh, this number is quite remarkable. And uh, looking at the forecast that he put out last year, he was forecasting price growth closer to 4% than 7%. So almost a double up there. But again, still happened. really like, it's not like we're talking about 20%, 25. I mean, you know, a 4% to me is still, is healthy. That's that's a, that's a, yeah, a I mean, healthy yeah, study. Yeah, that's right there. They're usually looking at 3.8%. Yeah, I mean, yep. so it's, again, we're not talking about, and, and I guess I'm saying this mostly because I don't, Again, we'll get into this in our next racket about sellers and keeping so, them. So four percent is healthy. What's happened here, and, and I'd love to know in the comments about your local market. What's happened in Connecticut is we've seen a twenty percent jump. I, I think in certain spots, homes, certain yeah. spots, yeah, yeah. median, median uh, yeah. spots. All right, so here's the uh, the deal. They're projecting in two thousand twenty one. His projection, rather, is. Again, he's back to his 4% number. 2020 hit the 7.4. He's back down to 4.1 for 2021. So he thinks the appreciation will slow back down um, to a more more of what we're mm -hmm. looking for in a healthy market. 3.8 mm -hmm. year over year is, is kind of the number. Uh, and so just over but that. But if you add the two together, I mean, you're still talking about over, over two years, almost, you know. Yeah, 11% in right. two years. Yeah. All right, new home sales. Uh, 2020 new home sales went up 8%. And next year, he sees startups uh, by a very significant 16.4%. That so, does not surprise me at all. And I think that has mostly to do with the fact that we have such a, a lack of inventory. So um, buyers are really only able to build at this point. It's interesting though, too, because I have tons of buyers that want to build and it's mostly because they know that their house is going to sell so quickly that they're apprehensive about actually listing their house because there isn't anything to buy. Yeah. We're getting into a new construction situation. They know when to sort of put the house in the market because yeah. they're able to then like, you know, do it, you know, 60 days prior to the house being completed. You better have a tight deadline. I don't love that strategy personally <laughs> because well, you just don't, if, it, if it's gonna take you a year to build, I mean. Oh, I don't think it'll take, I mean, it, it'll certainly happen in 2021. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, obviously just, you have to be realistic with it. But again, if there's nothing else on the market, yeah. I mean, it, it, but they need to sell. Like we're talking about families that are not fitting homes or people, you know, like there's, there's only so many options. Yeah. I just wouldn't say, you know, I'm guaranteed to get a certain number 12 months. No, now, right? no, no, no. I, I hear you there, but I mean, good luck going into a multiple offer situation with a Hubbard. I mean. And so uh, he goes on to the next category with forbearances. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't address the one thing that is troubling a lot of brokers and their clients, and that's forbearance. That's the one thing a lot of, um, I would say, the national news outlets have done a really poor job, just like saying, there's this many people in forbearance, which means we're going to have a market crash because they're all going to foreclose. And that's basically what he says here. Right. You know, is, you know, sure, if... Um, well, they're, they're grabbing a headline. There's 2.76 uh, million homeowners in active forbearance, and that represents 5.2% of all mortgages, okay? So it sounds like a big number, but it's 5% of all mortgages. Uh, for perspective, the, the number of homeowners in forbearance is down almost 2 million from its peak back in May. That's a drop of 42%. So a lot of people took forbearance as in an abundance of caution uh, because they had the ability to do it. And we've seen we've seen this continue. We've set, we have in the last couple of weeks seen it just tick back up a little bit, but for the most part throughout the year, uh, and, and we can put this chart up here: mortgages and forbearance. It has been on a steady decline. Again, we've seen it tick up just a touch here. Uh, well, thank goodness November, this December. vaccine came though, because I, I mean, this winter, if we didn't have an end in sight, it may be a little scary. So here, here, there's four uh, big bullet points, and this is a very lengthy. Um, but again, very digestible, yeah. very, yeah. very digestible. As dramatic as the projections might seem, it's worth noting a few things. During the Great Recession, foreclosure filing spiked with 1.65 million American homes going into foreclosure in the first half of 2010. But this is well above the most pessimistic forecast for foreclosures next year, 2021, if you want to compare, mm -hmm. you know, kind of what happened back then. Uh, this is uh, and even if defaults rise dramatically, they'll still come in well below the levels we saw following the bursting of the housing bubble. Number two, 
As I talked about earlier, home prices have risen steadily since 2012, and then obviously even more so in some markets mm -hmm. like ours mm -hmm. this year. And homeowners have built up large equity reserves. We've talked about this that a number of times, equity. how much equity yep. people have, <clears throat> which is the total opposite of the situation we saw in 2008. If you're in forbearance right now and you're in trouble, knowing what homes are selling for in your area, right. aren't you going to test the market Absolutely. before you lose your home yeah, and, you and go you know, into foreclosure? Of course you are. And with low inventory, these these homes would, if you put your house on the market, it's going to get snapped up if, it, if it's in a median price point or close to, right. um, you, you know, certainly the high end could be a, a little bit different. Because home values have seen, uh, have been rising, many homeowners, uh, home home borrowers in forbearance will be able to escape the foreclosure by just selling, like we just said. Right. Uh, we know that there's more than enough demand and that they will sell to make sure that they get the equity out of the home instead of potentially losing it. All right, lenders, uh, number three, have no stomach for a repeat of the foreclosure crisis we saw back in 08. Absolutely. I am, today I am seeing lenders positioning themselves to use a more cooperative, less punitive approach to delinquent borrowers. Right. Well, that great recession though was because of the housing market. Cor it was because of the mortgage, mortgage market, right. for sure. So, I mean, we're in a very different situation. Yeah. I mean, we, we have lenders here that aren't even writing jumbo loans right and now. We have a uh, lender, Buffet, who actually has been on the, uh, we let him sneak on the real world one time. A while back, he wrote us or, or sent me an article. Let me see if I can just find it real quick. It has to do with um, bar, uh, self-employed borrowers. So let's see here. Where is it? Listen to this. He writes, you will, um, Fannie Mae gets tighter with self-employed borrowers. There, I mean, everybody's tightening up really everywhere again he he can't yeah. even write jumbo loans right, right. now which again it's nice because that price is actually going up this year but um yeah he won't he can't even write a jumbo loan yeah at this point and obviously you can you can still get a jumbo loan for in some instances of course but, but, but his, in his situation and, um, yeah. and so to see what they're going to do and and it makes sense if, you, if you're self-employed because of what's happened to the small businesses through the health crisis that the banks are going to get even tighter on that self-employed uh, borrower. So mm -hmm. we're, we're not dealing with, with no. 08 lending practices. Number four, uh, many but not all of the owners in forbearance will not enter for closure because they will be able to catch up on their past due amounts by paying more each month. And some may be allowed to add these past due amounts to the to end the of the end. mortgage by length in its term. Obviously, everybody's situation is different there. Um, all right. Final thoughts. Uh, housing bubble burst. He does not see that. I'll let you read through that. Uh, mass migration. He's still seeing a lot of people. Wanting yeah, but to he's move. saying that it's. But he's saying that it's not actually as big of a migration as as, as what Zillow says. Well, as what as what most are assuming. Yeah, cities are still pretty solid. And Zillow projects huge movement. So so he's a little less bullish on that. For sure. Um, condos. I don't see the condo market collapsing across the country, though. I see significant issues issues in mar markets like Manhattan and San Francisco. Right. That obviously makes sense. Um, now I think like locally for us looking at the condo market, I, I see value appreciation happening because our single families shot up so much right, here. Right. Um, yeah. To get a two bedroom, you know, condo is like, like a buck 75 in some situations where man, that's like nothing. Yeah. Kind of so, poof. so like, I think anything, um, 2.75%. I mean, hello, you're yeah. talking about like hundreds of dollars. It's going to be a local, uh, situation, but for sure. Uh, we've got, he's got one comment so far. This just came out. Excellent overview. I agree. It's an excellent overview. Excellent read. We're going to link that up. I highly recommend you reading it. Yes. All right. Not a racket. And we're going to get into racket number two. And that is another Inman article overpriced listing. How to persuade clients to drop that number. Uh, this is, they're doing a really good podcast here. R Real estate coach uncensored is the name of the podcast. And, uh, I've, I've jumped into a, a little bit of their content bernice I ross i feel like i'm gonna maybe yeah maybe not all right so look, we're just gonna go through the list and kind of say give our two cents all right yep. number one the best defense is a good offense the honeymoon period when mm -hmm. you're sitting at the pitch when mm -hmm. you're getting the listing when you're talking about putting the house on the market mm -hmm. that's the time to 
get the right price. Well, right. And they're also saying, though, that, you know, you can explain to the seller that the honeymoon phase during the listing is the first two weeks. Yeah. So if you're not getting anything, and I say that every time, like we will know immediately. Because again, here too, he's talking about a lot of sellers are now wanting to push the market, test the market. Um, I have had a lot of sellers and I and I and in some situations I, I'm willing to test it if it's something that's you know in the right price point but again you will know quickly if you have already priced yourself out of the market testing the market is a poor idea because most showings occur during the so-called honeymoon period the first right. 14 to 21 days yep. the property is on the market after this initial surge of buyers showings drop dramatically dramatically here's something else that they didn't um, say this but he, but if you're a buyer in the market, and you've missed out on two or three properties, you're like, man, these things are selling in two or three days. And so if you see something that's been on 30 days, what are you now telling yourself as a buyer? Something wrong, don't even wanna look at it, and they're not even scheduling that showing, they're only scheduling showings on stuff that's brand new, right. because they feel like the good properties are selling in two or three days. Right. So you don't wanna go through this 14, 21 day testing period. Oh, for sure. You're gonna cost yourself money as a Absolutely. seller. Absolutely. Uh, number two. And obviously that 14, 21 days, the, the two days selling, we're talking median prices, obviously. Mm -hmm. you, you have something super luxury market, those days kind of go up. I think what's nice though too, is maybe at that situation, if they if they are wanting to test the market, I know that they're talking you out of doing that right now. But even if you can get a price reduction signed at the listing, so you're not then having to have a whole nother conversation yeah. in two weeks, like, hey, listen, I'll do this for you, but here's the price reduction sheet already, like, and then sign it. And then it just, it takes the conversation and out later. you made your case how strongly you feel about the price that you're presenting right right uh number two the 10 days or 1000 page views approach i like how they frame this bernice this, this is great here's a similar strategy you can also use on listing appointments when you take the listing tell the seller that if you have 10 showings with no offers that's always the golden rule eight to ten showings equals an offer if you're priced right or if you have a thousand page views we never see a thousand page well uh i'm, I'm thinking saves on zillow That's yeah wrong. no there we definitely see a thousand this is talking views, about yeah. on the mls yeah. side uh and only a handful of showings during the first 14 days on the market they need to drop the price absolutely if a thousand people have seen you combined between zillow and realtor and truly and redfin and all these different places unless and, and, you didn't do professional photos i mean that may be true. that may be yeah. well 100 percent of listings should have professional that photos may be by your now, problem guys. Come well on. i don't know about that uh number three you're not doing your job. This is what you hear a lot of times. Sellers are frustrated. Like, what, show me where you've been marketing my home. What are you doing? You aren't doing your job. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. And uh, you now have to absolutely be ready to handle that objection. That's going to be an objection that you, if you take an overpriced listing, don't have the conversation up front. Don't tell them that they're going out overpriced from the beginning or turn that listing down. You're now setting yourself up for, for these conversations. Being blamed, yeah. Right. Uh, so you're going to want to look, there, there's a whole list of ways you can, you can do this, um, to show that you're actually doing your correct. job. Yeah. Performance reporting. You should be sending that out to your sellers every single week. We've mm -hmm. talked about that in the past. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can read through those. Oh, look, they even give you a little script. Yeah. I like that script. Mm -hmm. Here's the script, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, as you can see from this spreadsheet, Oh, I like, as I promised. I always say that. Your listing has had over 10,000 page views during the past two weeks. This doesn't include the 100 brokers and open house visitors we've had at your brokers open and Sunday open houses. That maybe not working well, during in COVID. COVID. I, don't, I don't think you're doing yeah. brokers opens right now too often. Uh, the issue here is the price, not the marketing. Oof, man, they are going right at it here. Right I, at I might it. want to do this one face to face or on a Zoom. <laughs> uh, consequently, you have had an important decision to make. You are going to lower the price to where the property will sell or are you going to leave it at the current price and let it sit on the market? It's your choice. What would you like to do? I wanna have this conversation in person, Zoom or on the phone or in person, okay? Uh, that would be my advice. Well, to, I don't, to again, it was a script. I can't imagine that was an email. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> when you read it, it's <laughs> a little different. Uh, number four, the odds of selling when the market is the issue. Here's another tried and true approach for getting a price reduction. If your listing is located in an area with too much inventory and prices have started to decline, here's what to say. You're not gonna have that right now in this market where you've got 25 months of inventory unless you're in the extreme luxury price category. Anything close to the median price points across the country, you're not gonna have 25 months of inventory, mm -hmm. but obviously you would explain months of inventory to the seller. You would say, yeah. hey, uh, 25 months of inventory means if nothing else Absorption. came in the market, it would take 25 months to absorb right. this particular price range. Yep. So. Definitely, always educate. 
Absolutely. Always be educated. I mean, that's well, and line. I think that it, I mean, even, I mean, obviously this is just taking the listings, but I think that even with like your CMAs, like I always include active listings too. So you could see exactly what your competition is and where you actually want to position yourself based on what's sitting on the market right now yeah. too. And then number five, if you're seeing price declines. So if some of the comps are having price declines and they're selling, you want to show that to yourself like, hey, uh, here's three comps. They all did. 10%, 5% price reductions, mm -hmm. and they sold they within contract. the next yeah. seven days. Right. On the flip side, because you're not gonna see that as much in this market, you're probably gonna, going to see things going under contract quickly. When I'm pricing the property, say they wanna go at 325, here are four properties that listed at 299 and got bid up to 320, 325. Right. This is a strategy that I would recommend over right. overpricing and maybe missing that honeymoon um, period that they talked about right. earlier. Well, I think obviously listing at 299, you're opening yourself up to a $300,000 buyer, which then is driving up the 325 buyer even more because now it's a multiple offer. So. And I have another script in here for- They if have you so get, many scripts. You love yeah, scripts. I love scripts. If you're looking for scripts, this is a great piece by Bernice. We've done two great Inman pieces here today and we have a third Inman piece. Oh, by the way- Do you need way, some water? I feel like this is way, um, long. Uh oh. You, you are supposed to have those questions prepared for me <laughs> from the last. Uh, I'm not going to let you off the hook on that. We're going to do the marketeer and then you get your questions. Oh my gosh. I don't even think I remember them at this point. Uh, you were supposed to come prepared for that. Yeah. You have them? I don't know. Hmm. hmm. All right. Uh, marketeer of the week. This is another opinion piece. We Looking like, for marketing help. We like opinion pieces. Although the last time we gave our opinion, we got like ridiculed in oh. 149. Remember? Last episode? He wasn't liking our opinion on, um, oh, on the God. video. Yeah, he before was, I get to this, uh, what did that guy say? That was ridiculous. He gave a whole list. He obviously didn't listen to the podcast, though, either, because he was very, he didn't understand. No, he says he listened to the whole thing. Well, but but we, but we show. said that people didn't want to work with that listing agent. Not agents. It was, it was consumers didn't want to work with that listing agent. If you didn't watch episode 149, you should, because when we talk about this most debated listing video of all time. Yeah, and the problem is now amazing. is that that actor in that video now stalks my Instagram. He's all over it. <laughs> That's true. He's stalking. <laughs> <laughs> mine too. Daniel Dobbs, thanks for uh, watching the podcast last week. Yeah. He said there was three issues in your podcast. Um, and then I, and I kind of wrote back. He said, one, judgment of the home seller and agent to use the video. Uh, the other is your criticism of Brad Inman, my poor Brad, uh, who simply is the messenger. And then number three, for all the highbrow agents who would never work to listen to their uh, they're full of gas when they have the opportunity to be the buyer's broker for an $8 million. That's not what we were talking about. So there were it, three issues with your comment, Daniel, if you didn't see my comment back to you. Number one, the issue was, this is an opinion podcast, so we're going to make judgments. It's exactly what we're doing on this. We're talking about an opinion pieces and we're giving our opinion on this podcast. Daniel, I love that you did comment and view. I, I really do appreciate that. Oh, um, you're doing a little shit sandwich. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number two, we didn't criticize Brad. Anybody in media, anybody who's built the media uh, conglomerate that Brad has understands we're not criticizing. He put out a very strong reaction, WTF, to this video. Well, but but that worked too because if debate. he had done a whole like, hey, watch this video, yeah, but make sure you watch this video first, like it wouldn't, it definitely wouldn't have had the same splash. And then number three, if you did listen to the whole thing, which you said you did, and I, I really thank you and appreciate you that for that. We agree, an eight million dollar sale is legit, and I don't think people wouldn't bring a broker to it because of the listing video. But the debate was, would you would you put this kind of marketing and branding? on your listings and that was the discussion and i right. appreciate you daniel for uh kind of continuing that discussion for sure all right market of the week looking for marketing help maybe you're thinking about making a hire in 2021 three questions to ask before you make a hire okay number one so if you're if you're outsourcing this marketing right i would caution anybody who hasn't done the marketing themselves for uh, you know a number of year or years on your own brand not to go hire someone who you think is young and understands social or marketing. Uh, and if you don't have the time to train and the time to basically manage, micromanage that process, you're gonna waste time, money, and effort on that hire. So I agree with the outsourcing approach. But when you are interviewing uh, media companies, marketing companies, number one, have or you worked- Or individuals. Or individuals who, who are freelancing. Right. Have you worked with real estate agents before and may I see your portfolio of work? You know, if you're just gonna hire a marketing company that, that's typically working with 
um, a you know, product. Well, product I mean, we have a product, but more totally of a product. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're trying to sell sneakers, it's very different than building. I want a marketing media company that focuses on the real estate industry that understands it. That isn't Can trying to wear too many tell. hats. I mean, Absolutely. you need to definitely story tell in this business. So that's a great question. Uh, number two, how will you execute what I want? Show me what's your plan to do it. And that's number three. When will we review and plan for our projects? Are you going to have a calendar of when things are going out, how they're going out, who's doing the creative, when they're going to be posted? What's the plan? Show me that. And, and before I even hire you, yeah. you should be able to show me that. Well, and I think... And it also part of that too is is when do you need stuff from me too? Because yeah. I think that that's really important too, so that your your you know your 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 expectations are aligned. Because the last thing you want is you're getting pissed off because your person's not actually doing the job. That's right. But if you're not providing the information that they need, and you guys never decided there to be any sort of content like drop, like you're really just gonna be setting up that hire to fail. Joe, I want it in big bold letters, and we'll, we'll link it down below. If you are looking to have a conversation, jill at re3media.com can set you up with a consultation, focuses just on the real estate industry. I would encourage you to email jill at re3media.com. Sorry, Jill. shameless <laughs> plug there for Jill. So contact Jill if you do have any marketing needs, editing needs, that kind of thing for your branding and marketing approach in if you're real estate specific, obviously for 2021. Wow, Jill. that was a big 2021 conversation. Lots of 2021. We're getting yeah, into we're it. Here, I can't wait. Can here. you believe it? I mean, it's already almost I, the new year. I can. Is your shopping ready? Yeah. Good. Yep. Okay. Sure. Well, all right. Congrats on 150 episodes. Yeah, you as well. Congratulations. It's been fun. It has been fun. If if you're not subscribed to the Real Word. YouTube channel, go do that right now. Hit the like button, definitely subscribe. These videos, if you're watching them specifically on YouTube on the One and Company channel are going away in 2021 and they're only gonna be posted on the Real Word channel. Obviously, if you're listening, we appreciate that. If you're listening to, to the podcast, whether you're on Apple or Spotify or SoundCloud, please leave us a five-star review. We need to start getting conscious on our reviews on the podcast side. Uh, we definitely need subscriptions on the new YouTube channel because it's brand new. We, we've backloaded. Brand spanking. Look we've, at us back to zero. Yeah, we are. We've backloaded all loses. the old content there. So you're not going to miss any of the, the old content. But all of the new content in 2021 is only going to live there. So make sure you subscribe to that. If you've been listening and you've been the secret lurker, go throw us the, the subscription, Aww, please. The, the like. Lurkers. All of that kind of stuff. Uh, but appreciate like you lurkers. guys. I think I lurk. I'm not, yeah. I think I might be a lurker. Yeah, you're, you are a lurker. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a few episodes <laughs> left here before the end of the year. Maybe two. I don't know. What are we saying? Yeah, maybe a couple episodes left. We appreciate you. We want everybody to have a great 2021. We hope these tips were helpful. Stay healthy too, it, I hope. Please. Yes, please do that. And if they, if they were helpful, please share this video to somebody in your office. Maybe your broker or your manager or somebody else that can uh, that can benefit from this content. Good. All Thank right. you. Nicole, you feel good about it. You got, you got. Great. I think, I think you hit your your word quota for the day. I feel fantastic good. about it, and uh, hopefully you guys do too. Keep it real. We'll see you next time. See you guys.